Facebook Live, Facebook Live, we have arrived. One more time, y'all. Let's uh let's 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 get it in. Conference muted. Conference recording started. I want to thank everybody for chiming in. This is watching Derek Yahuda Israel, also known as Pastor Derek, on the evening scriptures uh, study on this 27th day in February uh, 2023. Deanna, good to see you in here. Uh, Nicole Bell, always a pleasure. Good to see you in here as well. Patricia Johnson, good to see you in here. Demina's in the building. Good to see you in here. Hallelujah. Al Mal. Alan Mallory is up in here. Don Deems. Hallelujah. Who uh, Latricia Johnson? Always a pleasure. Frank. Great hanging out with you today, sir. Good to see you in here as well. We buttoned up the um have no fellowship series this morning and now we headed into uh you know a new series um in uh uh, uh Luke y'all Denise Wilkins good to see you in here we're gonna we're gonna do Luke uh, twenty eight um through through thirty Twenty-eight through thirty, and um, the name of this series is "Count the Costs." This is the "Count the Costs" series. Logan, good to see you in here, sir. "Count the Costs," part one. Count the costs, part one. Our base scripture we're going to be teaching out of is Luke 14, 28 through, through 30. Is that all right? Be patient with the process. Y'all come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Because we in here. Thank the most high for Mother Joyce. Good to see you in here as well. <sighs> oh, excuse me for yawning. I'm tired, y'all. I'm a little tired today, but it's okay. Mother Katie, good to see you in here. Count the costs. Count the costs, part one. Bree. We count the cost today. Did you did you want to sing? Did you want to sing a song for us today? Before we get started, you in the mood to sing a song? Count the cost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kevin, good to see you in here, sir. Come on in, young lady. A uh, breeze. Come on in. Barbara, good to see you in here. Faithful. Yolanda Adams, sis. Always a pleasure seeing you. This thing really be tripping sometimes. We gonna get it. We definitely gonna get you in here. We get you get your couch cost part one. Right on, Logan. Good to see. Shalom, shalom. I'm sorry. I know it's dark in here. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Bless you. Good. Let's see. Good to hear you. Yep. Good to hear you. How about that? It's been a long time. All right. Let me pull this up for us. <clears throat> Bless you, young lady. Shalom, shalom, sis. Sister Adam, my sister. Jamina Yahoo, good to see you in here. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Yahuwah. Thank you, Yahuwah. Thank you, Yahuwah. We love you. Hallelujah. Thank the Most High for our sister. Hallelujah, Yahuwah, ushering us into his presence. Oh, how we praise you, how we magnify you. For you are not, not only worthy, but you worth whatever we go through. Hallelujah. 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 Alvin, good to see you in here, sir. Hallelujah. Good to see you in here. Al Hawk is in the building. Danielle is in the building. Sutton is in the building. Hallelujah. We're starting a new series. Uh, the name of this series is Count the Cost. Hallelujah. Count the Cost. Count Hallelujah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Hallelujah. Mm. Johnson, good to see you in here. Hallelujah. I feel that in my bones. Ah, thank, thank you, Yah. Mm, thank you. You did not have to do it, but you did it. Told on, Yah. Hallelujah. Group your name, yeah. Hallelujah. You are worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, with no further ado, um, yeah. Mm, thank you, y'all. All right, y'all, let's get it in. Um, our base scripture is Luke 14, 28 through 30, y'all. Look how it go. Look what it say. It says, for which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and Count the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it. At least happily after he have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that be behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Are y'all with me? Luke 14, 28 through 30. Logan. Luke, Luke, Luke 14, 28 through 30. Um, yeah, I still, I'm still reeling off that, um, I'm still in worship mode. But let me teach. <clears throat> Thank you, Yahoo. Hallelujah. Mm, I just worship him now. Really, he is so worthy. Hallelujah. It's okay, Logan. Hallelujah. Which of which which of you intending to build a tower is not down first, right? Um, um 
we we take we take natural things very seriously, don't we? We take natural ventures, natural occasions, natural situations. Beard, good to see you in here. Count the cost series part one. Luke fourteen twenty eight through thirty. Uh, Logan, 28 through 30. 14 chapter, you got the chapter right. It's the 28th verse through the 30th verse. But when we take natural things, right, especially those of us that are organized, right, those that are organized, plan things, you know, we we, we 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 approach things from a serious calculated you know position especially those of uh, uh those that went to school you know went to college and you know took classes you learn how to plan or organize and you figure out you know you you, you kind of like work it out from start to finish don't you don't you banks good to see you in here bit in the building banks but you know how you plan stuff from start to finish. You just don't plan a start. You got you got to know the outcome. It's called measurable results. You want you want to be able to measure your results based on, you know, the formula. And that's it right there, Logan. You got it in the house. Luke fourteen twenty eight through thirty. Right. Now those that didn't really go to school like that, and you know they're not prolific in it, but everybody do it. I'm telling you. You plot um, how you gonna go about things, all the way down to cooking a meal. Do you have enough ingredients to, you know, to finish the recipe? You don't start cooking something and you don't have no, you know, you don't have no flour, or you don't have the eggs, or you don't have whatever you might need to finish, you know, finish the the dish, to finish the meal, right? Which of you intending to build a tower? He's not talking about a tower, y'all. He's talking about the principle, the formula that we use to accomplish whatever we accomplish. You just, you, you just don't want to stumble into the victory. You want to plan the victory. You want to plot it. Those of those that are in, 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 in sports, you know, you, 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 you plot the thing, you know, you plot that you're going to win. You practice, you train. Right? Yeah. You plan to win. I'm just telling you, you plan to win. Somehow, when it came to the most important thing on planet Earth, which is our relationship with the most high, folks stop planning and plotting. Folks arbitrarily want to approach the most high from an incredibly lazy standpoint. And then they want to be theologically lazy and say that Jesus did it all. So I ain't got to plan. I ain't got to plot. It don't matter how I live. It don't matter what I do. All I got to do is say I believe. We reduce to saying we believe because the believe is the do. We'll get there in the teaching, but we like the lazy route. All we got to do is verbally say, I believe. And from there, Jesus got it. But let's be real. If, that, if it was that easy, the scripture shouldn't be in here. For which one you intending to build a tower, sit it down, sit it not down first to count up the cost, whether it's sufficient to finish it. According to the doctrine of the day, it's already finished for you. You ain't got to sit down and, and, and count up the cost. Why, why, why I got to sit down and count up the cost? Jesus did it already. Let them tell it. From, from a more literate position dealing with the most high, which one are you intending 
to build a tower. Which one are you intending to be saved? Which one are you intending to see his face in peace when it's all said and done? Make it through the things that's coming on the earth right now. You want to spiritually survive what's going on. You want to spiritually survive the things that are hitting earth right now. You want to spiritually survive this, don't you? Lady E, good to see you in here. Hello, mother. I know you're in here too. And my children. Luke 4. 1928 in the uh, Count the Cost series, part one. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first uh -huh, and count the cost? Be, 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 being sober minded, whether we have sufficient to finish it. You, you, know what the, you know what a scripture like this is really intended to do? It's for you for you to be sober minded when you approach the most high and be honest with yourself on whether or not you're willing to obey him or not. That's just the truth. For me to cut straight through the chain, for which of you intending to build a tower sit if not uh, uh sit if not down first and, and, and count the call. Um when you first come to him, you really don't know what all it costs. But I'm telling you, from a spiritual, practical standpoint, when you come to him, it is a total surrender, or it's no surrender at all. It is a total surrender. I'm not speaking religiously or nothing. I'm telling you the truth. It's a total surrender. Now, how many people actually really did that? It's a whole nother thing. Yeah, you might need to get up out of there, Banks. And I really mean that, too. I'm not even joking. I didn't realize it happened where you was. I'm going to call you after the lesson's over. And, and I really mean that too. Oh my goodness, that just bothered me. But let me teach. You might get out of there. Anyway. For which, which, for which of you intending to build a tower sit us not down first and count the calls. Whether you have sufficient sufficient. Now, because salvation is so instantaneous, what, what a scripture like this does really is sober you up. Those that did it, those that did it for real, right? A scripture like this will sober you up and you'll be able to reflect back on what you did this isn't necessarily to prompt you to do it this would be something that you did even though it happened instantaneously meaning this when the basura what they call the gospel when the gospel came to you right when the gospel came to you it um did, did something to you for the believer it did something that is hard to put in words, but the gospel caused a complete surrender to the point that one is willing to walk away from anything for him, though he's not clear or she's not clear on what all she got to walk away from. Yeah. When, you, when the Basura come, you know how the Bible say, you know, he, you know, John ten. It says, "My sheep hear my voice." When the true word come to someone that's in this lost, dark world, it just does something to them, and it causes them to surrender completely. It's like the Pied Piper. It's something 
in his word that grabs his children and it's an internal surrender. And it's not a checklist type of a surrender. You can't approach the most high on some checklist type of a surrender because that's you doing that. That's your that's your your mind. That's your 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 stinking thinking. That's you plotting and planning. My big bro in here now. What's up with it, G? Listen. Count the cost series part one. We're in Luke 14, 28 right now. But when the word comes, it causes you to for the believer, y'all. There's a total surrender and a scripture like this for which one of you intending on building a tower city not down first and count the cost whether he has sufficient to finish it now now you can go yeah that happened even though it, it didn't happen uh methodically like that it happened instantaneously it happened that when the sword came in that moment I counted the cost to say I don't care what it costs. I want him. I, I don't care the price. Now, of course, we probably didn't articulate it as a price, but I don't care what it is. That's the type of stuff. Give me that. And they say, you don't even know how much it costs. I don't care what it costs. I don't care what I don't care what it costs. I'm not leaving here without that. Period. It's that attitude. And in, 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 in a response to the word like that, supernaturally you counted up the cost. Because I'm going to tell you, when the, the Basura come to certain people, when the gospel come to certain people, certain people walk away. Because I'm telling you, instantaneously, they counted up the cost. Though it appears spontaneous, and in a sense it was. But there's an eternity in a second when you're dealing with eternity. There's a lot that goes on. You know, you hear people say, uh, you know, when they almost died or whatever, their whole life flashed before them. In just one second, they was the whole life flashed. I'm telling you, time is has constraints when we're dealing in the natural realm. But in the spirit realm, there is no time like that. And so uh, it's like an eternity in a moment. Oh, I'm trying to teach this. For which, for which of you, intending to build a tower, sit it not down first and count up the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it. I'm, I'm, so so, so it, it's very rare that one would go home after hearing the gospel, the Basura, right? And sit down and say, now, am I willing to stop doing this? And never, no, I'm not. Maybe I'll get that up, but I'm not willing to get that up. And no, I, I, I really got a problem. It don't work like that. There's some people that might methodically go through things, but I'm telling you, the reason why you would have to go through a process like that is something wrong with you spiritually. Because, because you, you're, you're, um, I don't know. I don't, I just don't, I don't, something wrong. Something wrong. Something wrong. When you hear something so good, good. When you hear a deal that you can't refuse, you know, car salesman, I'll make you a deal you can't refuse. Oh, that old good talk. When you hear a deal you can't refuse, you can't refuse it. If you see it, if you see it like that. That implies the deal is going to be so worth it to you, you're going to be more than happy to pay the price I'm giving you. You're going to be more than happy to pay it. Yeah. And in this sense, for which of you intending to build a tower? This is natural. This is parabolistic language. So you can get the gist of what's going on here. For which of you intending to build a tower, sit not down first and count the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it. 
Because we're ta not talking about buying a house or a building or a tower or a car. We're not talking about that. That's the parabolistic language that's going to break down the process of true salvation. This is slow mo of what happens instantaneously when the Basura comes. Because some people literally just walk away. You you give the Basura, you get a gospel to them, they're not interested. They counted up the cost. They're not willing to stop doing anything for y'all. I ain't got time for it. I already know I ain't finna stop nothing. I have no desire to stop anything. To serve, to, to serve an invisible God. I'm not interested. So, in the 21st, for which of you intending is intentions? Y'all with me? It's intentions. If you wouldn't be, put a one in here. Are y'all with me? It's intention. For which of you intending? Are you with me so far? Intentions. Put a one in here if you're with me. Intent, I'm intending to do something. You can't take it for granted that a person is intending to even build a tower, right? This is something that you intend, you have a desire, you're planning to do, something you want to do. Stay with me. For which of you intending to build a tower, right? Now we'll liken it spiritually. Which one of you are intending to be with Yah? You intend to. That's your desire. That's your plan. You intend to be with him. Let's start right there. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The who sort of believers, we're dealing with the believer right now. And the believers has some intentions. The, the spark to, 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 to faith is intentions. That's what hope is. Intending. I, I got a desire to do something. That's hope. And, and, and faith is the substance. It, it's the response. It's the evidence of what you're hoping for. Hope. Hope to be with Yah. I, I intend to be with Yah. It's the hope. You ain't got no, no intention. I, you know, you bring the gospel to some folks. I don't intend to do that. That's not what I what I plan to do. It's not what I plan to do. It's not what I desire to do. Straight up, which of you intending to build a town? Sit if not down first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Janika, good to see you in here. You tell the truth, uh, 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 Janika. Which of you intending? To build a top. You intending on being saved? You know this is a parable. This is parabolistic language for your salvation, your relationship with Yah. Are you intending on being with Yah? We got to start there, right? Bless you. I'm glad you're here, Johnson. You got you. Everyone is not planning on being with him. How many of y'all plan on being with him? Put a one in here if you plan on being with him. That's your intention since being here right now, is you plan on getting closer to Yah. I just want to see who are all with me. We can work from here. Who, who, how many of y'all intend on being with him? That's your plan. Intend. That's your intentions. That's your intentions. That's your intentions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. That's your intentions. Okay. Good, 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 good. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna methodically break this thing down, then. Okay, listen. So you're you're intending to build a tower, okay? Because we know what the tower is. It's your relationship with Yah. We're the tower. We're the building of the Elohim of Elohim of Yah. We're the tower, 
right? And we intend to be his tower, right? Listen, which of you intending to build a tower, sit if not down first and count the cost, whether you have sufficient to finish it. So now it gets real serious from here. Because salvation happens spontaneous for those that have it. Because you can shallowly confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, or you say you believe in your heart. You can confess with your mouth and not believe in your heart. You can confess with your mouth without surrendering. And the Messiah had a complaint against that, didn't he? He said, they draw nigh to me with their mouth and they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You can say all kinds of stuff with your mouth, but your heart is not in it. Are y'all with me? You can talk with your mouth, but your heart not be in it. You're just talking. I've done it so many years, it ain't even funny. I said all kinds of stuff. Girl, I love you. I'll pay you back next Tuesday. Yeah, I heard Wimpy say it first. <laughs> yeah, loan it to me. I'll pay you back next Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, I said all kind of stuff growing up that I didn't mean. So it's not based on talking, right? It's based on, do you do you mean what you say? Are, are you with me? Tia, I see you in here. What is this? The uh, uh, count, count, count the Cost series. Uh-huh. Part one. For which of you, Luke 14, 28, Tia, through 30, which of you intending to build a top? We plan to be saved. We plan to be with Yah. Sinners not down first. That happened fast for the believer. So fast. But the scripture was accomplished in that one instant. After we make a move like that and we accept him, listen to me, then your evil nature get involved. Your evil nature is on some, um, what have you done? I'm telling you that. Your evil nature wasn't invited to the party. Your evil nature was there when it happened. And it happened directly in front of your evil nature, but your evil nature wasn't invited. It wasn't involved. You didn't give your evil nature a vote. Because had you gave your evil nature a vote, he would have said, nah, we ain't finna do that. You ain't finna be running around here single and lonely now. You ain't, you ain't, finna, you ain't finna go broke. You would, what, you, what are you doing? What you mean? We, we club and we do... The flesh would have been like, wait a minute. Somebody say something crazy to me. I'm going to beat their dog on, whoop the flesh. And what you just did? What you just did? I didn't do that. You did. That's why the Bible tells us to mortify the deeds of the flesh. That's why Galatians, the fifth chapter, say the flesh is enmity against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one to another. Listen. They don't. They own two different pages. Your evil nature and the ear to hear what Yah is saying to you is two different pages, and you got to understand that. So, what happened real fast? It happened like like in the in the in the in the twinkling of an eye. Is that what Corinthians the fifteenth chapter say? In the moment of a twinkling of a of an eye. That's how fast you got saved for the believer. And 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 the, and the total surrender hits you. I quit. I'm with you. And then and then and then you know how you know a uh, 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 light come first. You see the flash, and then and then some moments later you hear go go. You hear the thunder. It's like that. That's the kind of concept. That you accepted the Most High spiritually. He quickened you and made you spiritually alive because what Adam did is caused us all to be born spiritually dead, born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Well, the word is the what really gives us all our life. So the word came down all those generations to be born of a virgin, to be wrapped and found fashioned as a man, to live the perfect example, then die on the tree for our sins. And then the flesh got up out of here, but then the Ruah, the word came back spiritually as the Ruah HaKadosh to be baptized inside of us. Right? 
So now we respond to the word in the moment of a twinkling of an eye. We accept him. And, 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 and Luke 14 and 28 happens instantaneously. But then the flesh find out, what have you done? What have you done? Now, now you can articulate the scripture. Yeah. Because now your flesh is talking to you. Yeah, the same flesh that hold grudges. The same flesh that's full of pride. You can't talk to me like that. You just ain't going to treat me any kind of way. That flesh. That flesh. In between the sheets, that flesh like to get rubbed and touched on. And that flesh. Say, wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 did, what did you do? What you decide me up for? And Romans, the eighth chapter, talks about um, the flesh is enmity. Enmity against Yah. And it said, it's not subject to the law of Yah, neither indeed can be. This flesh is not going to never cooperate with Yah. It has no intentions on doing it either. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm looking at myself in the screen, y'all. Y'all see me. I'm talking to you, too. It has no intentions. My flesh don't have no intentions of ever getting disrespected or pumped. Never. Has no intentions. No. It don't. Have no intentions of surrendering and being miserable to obey the word. Not my flesh. No. So have you done that? And now your flesh is talking to you. That's why the Bible in James 1 and 12 says, Blessed is the man that endure temptation. Endure what temptation? The temptation of your flesh. Because it's talking. I didn't sign up for this. No. No. Heck no. I ain't doing that. I'm not doing it. It's your flesh. That's why the Bible said, Mortify the deeds of the flesh. You got to kill that joker. Listen. So now that you didn't open your mouth, as you didn't confess with your mouth, believed in your heart, right? Now you say, now you gotta sit down physically, because you did some stuff spiritually. You gotta sit down physically and count up the cost. Now you contemplate. What have I got myself into? Well. You know that uh, lover you got that you, you ain't married to? That ain't going to fly. You got to stop that. Think your flesh going to agree with that? Huh? Is your flesh going to agree with that? Put a two in here if your flesh going to agree with that. No more touching, no more rubbing, no more cupcake. What? what? Is your flesh going to agree with that? Well, I can't smoke cigarettes. I love getting high. Me and my family, we fools. You have to you get crazy with me. We'll go, but now I will. You found the right one. Come on, bro. What you say? Your flesh ain't going for that. Are y'all with me? For which one are you intending to build a top? You say you intend on being with y'all, but is you gonna sit down first? You did spiritually in a moment of a twinkling of an eye, but now the flesh got the memo. Now you got to reset out. Because life is going on. Circumstances is piling up. Situations is piling up. You know, sit down first and see how you really feel about it, y'all. You'll find out how you really feel about him in this race. You're going to find out what's really going on. Oh, yeah, you'll figure it out. You're going to find out. See, 
spiritually from the gate, you chose Yah. And your flesh didn't. I'm telling you that. I'm not asking you. Theologically, I'm trying to tell you something. Your flesh will not and did not accept it. <coughs> Excuse me. So what you'll learn then is if you're spiritual or carnal, if you're natural minded, because Yah is speaking to your spirit man and wickedness and being contrary is speaking to your fleshly man. Paul in Romans the seventh chapter was explaining the war, the, the battle. That's what he was doing. He was explaining, y'all wanna roll with that with me? Let, let, let's roll, let's roll. Since, since we went this route, I didn't plan on going this route, but y'all did, obviously. We're going to figure it out as we go. But let's go to Romans, the seventh chapter. I want y'all to see the war, right? We're going to break this, this puppy open. All right. Uh... <laughs> See, uh, I'm just going to start the ninth verse. Ninth verse. Look what it say. Romans 7 and 9. Look what it say. For, for I was alive, for I was alive without the law once, right? In other words, he was cool until the law came and revealed to him that he wasn't. Right? The law. Oh, it's what exposed, shines the light on our sins, right? When we lawless and just doing our thing, we just doing our thing. But when the when the law come, the God's word on stone, it come and reveals to you that you ain't cool. That's what he talking about, right? He said, uh, uh, I'm trying to find the verse I was on. Nine, nine first. For, for, for I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Okay. When y'all tell you what to do, that's when we're exposed. I'm telling you that. Those of us that's even religious say we got our own religious program and we're comfortable with it. When the true word come and exposes it, you're like, what the heck? I'm telling you, in this race, you're going to find out if you're fleshly or if you're spiritual. If you heck of fleshly and religious, you're not going to accept that. And you're just going to be more religious. And then you'll turn out like the Pharisees and the Sadducees that was Yah's people bloodline, but spiritually was dead. And they hated the Messiah because he was the word made flesh. The Messiah was telling them what to do. The, Messiah, the word was telling them they was wrong, and they, they hated him for it. They was claiming a relationship with Yah, and they weren't going to let that go, and they was willing to fight truth in order to hold on to it, which which rendered them to be religious, having a form of Yahliness, but denying the power thereof. You got religious people, they got a form of having it, but they're in rebellion and they just really don't listen to what he's saying. And their comfort is their comfort is in being religiously deceived. Night first. Look what he said. For I was alive without the law, law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Yah told him what to do. He like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> so the and first didn't say it. And the commandment was ordained to life, I found to be on the death. What Yah says brings life, but it was killing him. For sin taken the occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. So that rebellious, sinful nature that we inherited from being human beings because of our, our daddy Adam, sin taken an occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. It took occasion. It took his opportunity to take me captive 
I saw what y'all said, but 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 sin snatched me, and I did what sin wanted me to do. Twelfth verse. Wherefore the law is holy, what y'all say is holy, and the commandment holy. What what y'all say is is holy, the commandment is holy, just and good. So he's not gonna blame y'all what he's saying. He's not gonna blame the Ten Commandments. It's not what he's gonna do. Was then that which is good made death unto me? So now. How good is my, 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 my slayer? Is that's what's killing me? Yah forbid. But see, Yah's not killing you. It's your evil nature. Yah telling you what to do didn't come to kill you. Your evil nature is here to kill you. Your sinful nature is here to kill you. You either gonna kill it or it's gonna kill you. Count up the cost, y'all. That's what we're dealing with. Listen. That it might appear sin. So what y'all say shines the light on our evil nature, our rebelliousness, our religiousness, our stubbornness, our unsubmissiveness. We on some like Burger King, have it your way. Uh-uh, don't work like that. Was then that which is Good made death unto me, y'all forbid, but sin that it might appear sin. Working death in me by that which is good. That sin might that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Now I can see the sin. I I, I see you now. Now now those of us that belong to him, we're able to look in the mirror of the word and really see ourselves. Say, oh no, I need to make some changes. I, I'm religious. I need to make some changes put a two in here if you need to make some changes put a two in here can i teach on this level put a two in here if you need to make some change if you need to make some changes put a two in here put a two in here if you need to deuces deuces ah, boom hey what's up boom. hey i'll see you 15 verse he said for that which i do i allow not he doing stuff that he don't like. I don't want to do this. I'm not allowing this. It's just happening. This is happening. For for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would do, I want to obey Yah. I want to obey the commandments. I want to do what he said. That do I not. But what I, I hate, that do I. Do y'all see that war? If then I do that which I would not, and consider on the Lord that it's good. What Yah said, what Yah told me to do is good. Now then it's there's no my eye that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So the spirit man in me won't obey Yah. Can y'all see that schizophrenia? That dual dual nature? Can y'all see the joke? Can y'all see the difference now? That we'd like two people now? That the that the, the Ruach came inside of us and made us alive to Yah, but this sinful nature can't stand Yah? Schizophrenic. No panic. <laughs> Sixteen verse. If then I do that which I would not, I consider on the law that it is good. Tell the truth. Now then it's no my eye that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Okay, so the inner me really won't obey Yah, but this sinful nature is going to destroy me. I'm it's official. Schizophrenic. Eighteen verse. For I know that's in me that it's in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. But at least he knew where the problem was. He knew it was in his evil nature. He knew he really wanted to serve Yah. You got to be able, from a theological standpoint, count up the cost because you're going to have to turn on somebody. You're either going to turn on Yah or you're going to turn on your flesh. But you can't serve two masters. Are y'all with me? 18 first. For I know that in me, talking about this evil nature, that Adam nature, born in sin, shaped iniquity, that dude, right? That gal. Listen to me. For I know that's in me, that's in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me. I want to do what's right. For will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good? Can't find it. I'm tripping. The guy that messed up again. Is y'all with me? Leslie, son. I see the two coming from you, Tia. Is y'all with me? 19. For the good which I would, I do not. See? Every last. How many of y'all want to do good? Put a two in here if you want to do good, if you want to obey y'all. Put a two in here if you want. You have every intention of obeying y'all. For the good that I would, listen, 
put a two in here if you plan on serving Yah and obeying it. For the good which I would, I do not. Oh, listen to that. I find, why'd I do that? Why'd I say that? Oh my, that's why even in marriages, your marriage is not going to make it if y'all don't know how to forgive. Self-righteous people can't make it in marriage nor with y'all. You got to be forgiving because our flesh is worn. It's a war. I'm telling you. And those that's not married, it's still a, it's same war. To, to check yourself, Woo. you got to get in the mud, y'all. 19 verse, for the good that I would, I do not. I sure wanted to do good, though. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Oh, that's terrible. Now, if I do that which I would not, there is no more I to do, but sin that dwelleth in me. Something is in me. Something is in Something. Oh, my goodness. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present. 22. For I delight in the law of Yah after the inward man. Boy, do I love him. Don't you just love him? Fell in love with him even deeper when Bree was hanging. Woo! But I see then, I see another law of my members. Warned against the law of my mind. I see another law, in a wicked law. Warn against the all oh, help me. Warn against the law of my mind and bring me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, come clean, y'all. Don't act like you is a goody two shoes up in this joker. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Listen to the 25th. I thank Yah through Yahushua HaMashiach, our Adonai, our master, our Adonai. They call him Lord as master. Yahushua HaMashiach, Yah is salvation, our Messiah. And he's our master, too. He's not only Messiah, but he's masters. I thank Yah through Yahushua HaMashiach, our Adonai. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of Yah. Mentally, I'm with him, but with the flesh, the law of sin. See, he, he, he equated. He never pulled his flesh over to serving Yah. He's not deceived enough to think that he can serve Yah in that evil nature. Never did you see that in this scripture. As if his evil nature is going to submit to Yah. He said, so then with the mind, I serve Yah. But this evil nature, this joker is a rascal. Period. And that ain't going to do right. And it don't plan on it. Now, I'm glad the conversation didn't end right here. Maybe the chapter did. It, but chapters and verses just for navigational purposes. It's not for theological purposes. It's for navigational purposes. So you can navigate through the, the writings, the epistles. Romans 8 and 1 is the continuation of the same conversation. It is not a new conversation. It's the same conversation. When we left off in, 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 in Romans 7, right, in, in, in Romans 7 and um, uh, 25, right, we was like basically schizophrenic. We had we had our spiritual side that want to serve Yah, and then we had our fleshly side that's going to serve sin, like two, two people. Let's keep rocking. Romans 8 and 1. There's therefore now no condemnation. That's what we want. We don't want to be condemned. There's therefore now no condemnation of them that are in the Messiah. You got to be in the side, not 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 Gandhi, not 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 not, not Muhammad, not Buddha, not Hotel Egyptology, none of it. We need Yah. We need the Creator. That that the Allahim. That's where they get Allah from. Allahim, Elohim. Alahim, original Hebrew, A's, Aramaic, A's, Alahim, right? There's therefore not no condemnation which of them that are in the Messiah who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Did you see that? That was the solution. There's therefore no condemnation. There's there's no condemnation. We're trying to reach the point where we're, we're, we're back with Yah with no condemnation. Not Buddha, right? 
not the Muslim Allah. No hotel, no yoga, no Buddha, no energy, no spirits, no dead ancestors, none of that mess. Get that out of here. Sage, none of it. Get it all out of here. Dude, Romney was eating that stuff up. Found somebody uh, uh, worshiping the stars and all that. He says, bring them to the, uh, to uh, bring them out to the city and stone them to death. Kill them. None of that. Get that all. There's therefore now no condemnation of them that are in the Messiah, in the Messiah, who, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Not only do you have to be in the Messiah, God's plan of salvation. But it's still, because you could be in the Mashiach and still going against him, still fleshly, still carnal, still pleasing your flesh. Listen, there's therefore now no condemnation to them that, that are in the Mashiach who walk not after the flesh. You cannot do it. You can't serve two masters. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. <sighs> Let's go back to Luke, y'all. Luke 14, 28. Listen, listen. I don't like to make lessons too long. I need to give y'all something to chew on. Sure, Williams, you might want to run this one back. It was a good one. I just started a new series called uh, uh, Count the Cost. Count the Cost, part one. This is part one, Cheryl. Good to see you in here. We in Luke 14 and 28 right now. Fourteen twenty-eight, y'all. For which of you intending, you intend to build a tower? You intend to. You intend. This is your intentions, right? And that's a parallel, parabolistic language to you intend to be with Yah, right? You intend to have a relationship with him. You intend to be saved, right? Which of you intending to build a tower? Sit it not down first. You did when you first got saved. In the moment of a twinkling of an eye, you surrendered all. Those of us that did it, those of us that confessed with our mouth and believed in the heart, not just talking. We confessed with our mouth and we believed in the heart and we surrendered all. That happened in the moment of a twinkling of an eye, but then your flesh got the memo. What have you done? Because your lover is on their way right now. In between the sheets, what you gonna do? You finna count up the cost, literally now. You either finna sell out Yah, oh yeah. You either finna sell out Yah, or you gonna tell that joker don't come. Yeah. Love you, uh, uh, Teresa. Yeah, listen later. Bless you. Play it back. Luke 14 and 28, y'all. For which of you intending to build it, you intend to be with y'all, to be built up, to be that strong tower. Isn't that your intentions? Because it's sober-minded. Because something wrong with a person that intend to build a tower and then they count the their money, they don't have enough. They got they, they got money, but they're going spend it on something else. But they say, you know, I'm going to build the tower anyway. Something wrong with you. You know you can't do it. You know you ain't going to do it. You know you're not willing to pay what it costs. You know it. But yet, you say, I'm going to build it anyway. You got people like that. They're going to slap it together their way. They're not going to do what he said. They're just going to slap. I'm building the tower. But you, you can't be doing it. Mind your business. You can't be doing I said, mind your business. Oh, my bad. I'm just, okay, whatever. Do you then. Go on. Your tower is leaning. But go on. Go on do you. It don't look like it's going to. You know it's going to rain tomorrow. <laughs> He's leaning already. <laughs> Wolf coming. 
It's like he was practicing blowing. You know, he's going to blow on some stuff. He might blow on that little leaning tower here. <laughs> Let me mind my business. Okay. The wolf was walking with your lover headed towards your tower. <sighs> Think he's going to stand, huh? All right. Plaster falling off and everything. Huh? I hear you, Charvet. For which of you intending to build a tower, sit it not down first. I don't to go. And whether he has sufficient to finish it is, is interpreted as are you willing to pay what it costs? Are you willing to surrender all? Because everybody ain't. Are y'all with me? Oh, it's just the truth. A lot of people start with them, but they don't finish. Because they weren't willing to pay what it costs. Yeah, sit down. Look in the mirror of the word and examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. You got to sit down and be sober mind. And when your flesh get involved, your flesh want want going to ask you, what, what have you got? What have you got me into? What did you sign me up for? Because some of the stuff you planning on doing or some of the things you plan on giving up, I ain't willing to do, nor am I willing to give it up. So now what are we going to do? You have to take charge, yeah. If you don't make it, you have to take charge. Are y'all with me? If you with me, put a phone in here. If you with me, put a phone in here. If you with me. If you want me to put a phone in here. I'm finna go. If you want me to put a phone in here. If you want me to put a phone in here. If you want me to put a phone in here. Put a phone in here. All right. All right. All right. All right. I see you, Domina. All right. Put a five in here if you got attitude. I don't care what it costs. I'm willing to pay. Put a five in here if you like. I don't care what it costs me. I'm willing to pay. Put a five in here if you say, I don't care what it costs. I'm ready to write the check right now. What's Josh's cash at? <laughs> I'm, ready, I'm ready to do that. Do y'all do Vimo? <laughs> I'm willing to pay whatever it costs me. I'm willing to pay. Put a five in Because that's the only acceptable attitude. Go make it. Let's pray. Spirit of living Elohim, we love you and thank you for this opportunity to come before you. Humbles know how gleaming in the truth of thy word and thy presence, even once again, we thank you for this opportunity. We're here because every round goes higher and higher. It's getting maddening out of here. Out of here. Leading guide us. Set us up for the victory. Set us up for the victory even right now. Set us up for the victory even right now. Be merciful, y'all. Be merciful. Bless Teresa right now. Let her run it back. Bless Frank's little sister. Go see her in the hospital right now. Be merciful. Have your have a sabbatical with her. Minister to her. Send the words of eternal life, even in the hospital room. We decree that it's done.
and we thank you in advance. Bless everybody's in here on the sound of my voice. Encourage us that we move forward in you and we'll be careful to give you the praise and honor, not only now, but forever. Match this name of Yahushua. You help me pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Amon, that was a lesson for the day. I pray we all continue to obey everything the most I say. Okay? Hallelujah. 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 Thank everybody to push the share button. Thank everybody to tag. And thank everybody that financially supports this ministry. And those that financially support the ministry proves that this ministry is spiritually supporting you. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, let's continue to pray for one another. Continue to pray for Al Hawk and the loss of his auntie. And I know it's so so many people going down. We just got to continue to pray for one another. And that's just true. You call calling me, but I I need both of y'all. You Ohio folk. Well, listen, y'all, y'all know what it is, man. Y'all, listen, listen. There was more than one uh, plane, a uh, train, train derail, fire explosion with chemicals. And y'all remember when they created zombies? When they created zombies in the movie, everything in the movies they doing. But when they created zombies, it wasn't it a train crash. And the, the chemicals caught on fire, and the smoke in the city, and it can't, and it messed folk up. You think they playing out here? You think it's a game? This stuff is real. You gotta pay attention to what the devil doing. Yeah, that'd be like, like, I'm, man, I'd be so fat, I'd leave. That's just me. I ain't lying to you. Ain't no game to me. We dealing with a real devil. Ain't nothing play out here. They try to. Man, they they tease you with these little Marvel movies and all this stuff. They show you what it is, and then they doing it. All these portals and all that, and then they turn around and they doing it. They ain't playing. This ain't no game out here. They're finna play the alien game in a minute. They just gearing up to do it like immediately. This ain't, this ain't nothing to play with. So you gotta be ready to move. You gotta be ready to make a You gotta pay attention. Now, the name of your who is a strong tower, the rights run into it and it's safe. But simultaneously pay attention. Some can't move. Some can't make a move. Some, it will be drastic to make a move. I'm on a drastic team. You know, I'm not breathing that. I'm not messing with them. I'm getting away from them. We dealing with a real devil. Good to see you in here, Malaya. Run this one back. It was a good one. I think you enjoy it. Bless you. Good to see you in here, young lady. But y'all with me? And, and I'm saying, so Ohio, y'all call me. Call me now. I'm finna get off, y'all. Um, okay. Give me, hold on. Let me see who on the conference line. You might want to call to the conference and see how that go. But y'all call me. Y'all call me. Yeah, Malaya, run that back. Bless you, young lady. Always a pleasure fellowshipping with you. I think you enjoyed this lesson. Be brutal. Brock and Shalom, I'm gone. I'm going to the line, 302-202-1102, extension 815-648. Yeah, y'all y'all, y'all, yeah, do that. Add Brio on up to the three-way. Call into the line right now, but then as soon as we get off the line, probably ain't going to be over here long, call me direct. I'm going to talk to both of y'all. All right, or anyone else in Ohio that's a part of the ministry. Talk to them. Or anyone that's around train wrecks where they, because oh, there was one out here where well, they did a factory, they did a factory with chemicals in it, and then and then and then and then exploded, and it's on fire. You gotta pay attention. Pay attention to what they're doing. All right, I love y'all. Y'all be brutal. Brock Shalom. I'm gone.